So this is the second part of our chapter three charts topic. I have a few more things to go through and then you should be in a good state to uh, do all your work. So first thing we're gonna cover is something called alt text. So if I click on a graph and right click it, I get this drop down menu and there's this edit alt text. It opens up a task pane and alt task text just means what alternative text would you use to describe this object and its context to someone who is blind or visually impaired? We could say that it's just decorative, meaning that we don't need a description at all or alt text, but typically if we have a chart that's gonna be included in a report of some sort, and this report is gonna be distributed to somebody who is visually impaired, <clears throat> then we need some type of descriptor. So we'd have something like the column chart, displays the number of jobs in the different computer of title categories or 2016 and put a period. Now you might think it goes away if we just close the task pane, we don't have to press enter, so we close it. But if we come back, right click our chart, <clears throat> get our drop down menu, come to the edit alt chart, it's there again. Now something to be careful of and be aware of when you're doing your assignments, you will be adding alt text to a number of your graphs or charts. Don't press enter, because if you press enter, notice the task pane doesn't change, but it does add an extra line. Now the instructions in the assignments typically say, you know, enter this alt text, including the period. So as soon as you've typed in the period, check your spelling, check your capitals and no capitals, and then just close your screen. Okay, so that's the alt text. Something else that we need to discuss are workbook themes. So for workbook themes, that's found under our page layout. So page layout, and see we have themes here. And again, this is another one of those items. Remember with charts, if I have a chart selected and I go to the design tab, I have change colors and styles. Something we have to also be aware of is that if we go to the page layout and have the themes and change our theme, again, and let's maybe change this to Damask, notice how changing the themes changes how your charts also look. So three things to keep in, uh, keep track of. You might wanna change your workbook theme and then your chart style and then your color palette before you start doing any customization. So again, this is where your workbook theme is, page layout under themes. You can pick a theme and see as you hover over them in a PC, it'll change it automatically for you. We can go to colors, pick a different color palette and again, in a PC, as we hover over the different color palettes, everything in our sheets changes colors. Let's get rid of that. We could do the same thing for fonts, looking at the different fonts. And again, it sort of does it for everything. And then effects, you know, we could have some different fancy things. This, this one doesn't impact us as much. We don't take a look at this, but we do look at themes, colors, and fonts. And then don't forget when you have a chart selected under the design ribbon, you do have your change colors option for the different palettes, which will change any custom formatting you have done beforehand. And then also with the styles, the styles again could get rid of any custom formatting you have. So just be aware of the workbook theme, the chart colors and the chart styles. Let's move on now to something called spark lines. And spark lines are little graphs. They can be lines or bar, bar graphs that actually show up in an existing cell. So if I click a cell here that has in column G6, cell G6, and I go insert, and I have here a grouping in a PC that says spark lines. And I have line, column, and win loss. We're just gonna look at the line and the column. I can pick my line, it opens up a dialog box, and it says, okay, well, what data do you wanna actually look at? And let's, for now, let's just take a look at the 
from 2016 to 2026 estimated. <clears throat> Notice it had already populated the G6 where I had my active cell selected. And I can go OK. And now I get a little straight line, spark line graph. For the spark line, you can pick high and low points. You can deselect them. You can put markers on them. You can put last and first. Now I have just a little two line one or two point line. So that's all I'm seeing here. You can see negative points if you want, or you can actually deselect everything and just pick markers and then everything is selected. You can change the style of your spark line. So we could come here and maybe pick aqua spark line style accent five. We could maybe pick this one here, the gold spark line style accent two. Here's one dark gray spark line style dark number three. Let's pick that one. We could go in and do some more customization. We could pick the spark line color and let's maybe change it to red. So notice how the line switched to red. I'll undo that just so we can see it a little bit better. We can change marker colors. We can change all the markers to a particular color. So maybe let's change it to just black, okay? Or we could come in and say, okay, you know what? Just I want the high point to show up in this sort of pinky red. And then that one shows up in the color. So there's a fair amount of customization. Now we have the axis here that we could do. Typically we look at setting the vertical access minimum value options the same for all spark lines and the maximum value options the same for all spark lines. We do that when we wanna compare things. Let's maybe do two in a row here. So actually let's do it slightly differently. Let's pick these two sets of data. So the 2016 and the 2026 estimate for the software developers and the Infosys security analysts. Let's go insert and we'll pick line again. Notice how the data range is now selected in my dialog box and the location range, I'll put it right there. And we'll go, okay. And we'll come here, we'll put markers on it. We'll pick maybe a different style. Let's do this one here, the dark gray sparkline dot style dark number three. And let's come here and pick our marker colors. And let's change our marker colors to, let's make it sort of this brownie or brownie gold, okay? And we can see how that happens. Now with these selected, I can change my axis, as I said, same for all spark lines. And then I do it for the maximum, same for all spark lines. And this would allow you to compare it a little better. Notice how this one looks like there's a tremendous growth. But if I come up here and again, same for all spark lines, same for all spark lines, you'll notice nothing changes because I would have to select all the spark lines I was interested in. So I'd want to keep them all and keep them all. And notice again, it doesn't seem to switch it. So with spark lines, you're gonna to have to be a little careful. My suggestion would be if that you're going to put different spark lines in a series of cells. First off, I'm gonna clear everything here. So I'm gonna clear all back my borders and I'll say, I want spark lines here. I'll go insert spark line. My data range will be from 2016 to 2026. I'll go, okay, they're all there. I'll pick my desired style. Let's maybe just pick, well, actually let's put the markers on first. I'll pick maybe this style, the dark gray sparkline style, dark number three. And maybe I'll change my marker color to again, all the markers to that sort of dark gold. And now I'll come and change my axes, same for all spark lines. And now you'll notice that their scaling has changed for each of them. So just be careful with that because sometimes, you know, we can, like I did the first time, I create one spark line and then I create two together and I try to get them all on the same axis and Excel won't allow me to do that. So just, just watch out for that. Let's do the same thing down here. We're going to now, instead of creating spark lines, we're going to create a different type of thing. So insert spark line, but we're going to have a column one this time. So column spark lines, Again, notice how it, and it populates the location where they're gonna be placed because I had that selected. The data range then will be these eight cells. I go okay, and now I have 
little bars okay? or columns if you prefer. Again, we can pick a style. So let's maybe pick, uh, let's do this sort of greeny one. Let's put the, maybe just the high point on it. And let's go the sparkling color. Let's maybe make it this rose accent. And you can see that now we have the, the values here. So let's come here. It's not very nice. Let's maybe get rid of high points. Let's just put maybe low points. Let's maybe fix that color because it looks pretty ugly. Let's maybe put the dark blue, okay? And again, we could come here, select them all, and select the same axis for all of them. And again, that's just to allow comparisons. So you can see here, it's gone from 600,000 to 654, so not a big change. This one's 119 to 133. Well, if it's on the same axis as the one above it, it's gonna be a very narrow or very small line. And the same thing, 294 to 273, you can see they're being highlighted. Let's take a look at some more spark lines. Let's go over to the spark line sheet. So in this spark line, we're gonna do the same type of thing but we're gonna do it this time round for the January to June data. So again, I'm gonna do the first three as spark lines. So there's my data selected. So this is the trend from January to June. Insert line, where do I wanna put them? Well, that's the data range. I wanna put them here and Notice how, you know, we, we do have the relative and the absolute cell references. If you were going to copy this information anywhere else, this particular table of data, we'd want to put absolute on each of them. But for our purposes, we can leave this as relative and that is absolute. So there's our spark lines. Let's put markers on them. You can see how all the markers now show up. Let's maybe pick a style. Let's pick this one with the red dots on it. And let's come over here to the marker color. And let's maybe just make the high points, let's put them in that goldy color, okay? And we can see that the high points are just, if I blow this up a little bit, there you go. You can see the high points are these last points. Let's maybe do the same type of thing. Let's highlight them, go into the design, marker color. Let's maybe do the low one and let's make the low one. Oh, no, we already have red there. So let's make the low one, uh, let's just make it black. Okay. So now you can see the low ones have all been made black. Let's do the same thing, but for column, for little bars now. So let's do these three. We'll go insert and column spark lines. So again, I have here the location are these three cells, the data, I can now select the data. So I'm just trying to illustrate to you that you can you know, pick the location first and then pick the data, or you can pick the data first and then the location. And again, you, you don't need to worry about the, um, the data ranges, the cell references. So there's my bars. Let's take a look at, um, let's maybe just put low points on them so you can see that the lowest ones are showing up in red. Let's maybe pick a style. Let's show the black with the red. So there we can see it. And let's make the marker color. Let's again put low point maybe. I've already done low point. So let me, let's just do first point. Let's do first point in, let's pick an orange. Okay. So you can see the orange there. Now, as I said, you might also want to take a look at the axes so that you can compare them more closely. And in this particular case, you can see that the utilities and the unsubsidized rent values, well, they're showing as almost just straight lines because the shelter equipment is such high values. And again, we could do the same thing with the actual lines, keep them all the same, these two axes. And again, you know, because of the scale here, these, these are the largest values in salaries and wages. So it's showing higher up and then the medical supplies and the general supplies and food are showing lower down because those values are lower. So it does allow you to compare them, okay? All right, so that's our spark lines. Let's come back to our job outlook data.
And let's take a look at just a plain line chart. So this line chart is just plotting the percent growth. So let's actually try to create that. So let's highlight our data. <clears throat> if you have a PC, you can use your quick analysis tool, go to charts, and let's just pick line. And we quickly get our percent growth. And notice how because I had the heading selected, we get the title as the heading. If I take that away, as far as my data selection, well, it's not allowing it, me to do that because since I only have one series of data, Excel is smart enough to recognize, no, no, that is your heading, okay? Now, had I done it this way, just highlighted the values and created a line chart, notice how it doesn't have a chart title. And if I come to chart title, I could select it. Or if I come to select data, we can actually, <coughs> <coughs> mm -hmm. 